Yo, 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 what is going on in the neighborhood? It is your boy once again, the Ward Martian, with another tutorial. Uh, we are going to learn how to integrate uh, Zappa to your website or to your, you know, mobile application or whatever it is. All right. So if you don't know what Zappa is, it's, it is a payment merchant or like a payment gateway. So it does exactly the same thing that... Um, PayPal does, or PayFast, or PayGate, but uh, it is a little bit different in its own way, and one unique way is the fact that Zappa actually has its own mobile app, so it tries to take away a lot of things from you, a lot of, like, uh, mm, a lot of dev time, basically, you spend integrating something. For an example, you don't, you don't capture the customer's card information, the app that they provide actually does that all you try to do is present a qr code to the customer and once they scan that um, the payment is processed and they give you uh, they enable you to actually put up a webhook where they post the results of the payment whether it was declined or accepted so, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to walk you through actually an application that I've already built because, you know, we're trying to save time. There isn't a lot of time we have here. Um, yeah, you could just go to this repo here and the code will be there. Um, so what we're going to do, what we are going to try to do, and I'm, I'm going to try to preserve time. Um, we're going to, I'm going to walk you through how I built the, um, the API part of Zerpa. And we're going to do like a web example as well because they also have like a web uh, using the JavaScript SDK so integrated uh, to your website. You you need, okay, so in, in order to start working with Zappa, even if you're just doing tests, right, you need credentials. Uh, they provide you with like a whole lot of credentials. You need a site, a merchant ID, you need a site ID, you need a username, a password, point of sale key, point of sale secret, and a lot of other keys, uh, merchant API key. I emailed these guys before and I was like, hey guys, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like a test on something on how to integrate uh, payment gateways. So could you, could you help me with the keys and everything? And the way they did send those keys to me. So they sent me everything I'll need to get started. So in order to get that, you need to contact support, unfortunately, Zepa at support. Okay. Um, another thing you're going to need is, since we are going to be using Node, as you can see, we're using JavaScript. Uh, we are using Node. So you are going to need to have Node installed, you know, and all the, the other things, basically Node, Node things. Cool. All right. So if we go to, so this is what I've just explained before. Uh, you, so you 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 need you need some keys and you contact support to get those keys. So what Zappa does is they give you a merchant API key and that merchant API key doesn't change. So that's what you always use on your headers for authorization. Okay, and what you do is once you have that, um, the process is pretty straightforward. You upload an invoice. You get a QR code after uploading an invoice. The customer scans that QR code and they post to a URL that you send them. So you send, um, you ask again for support for them to set up a webhook for you where on every payment, they pay, pretty much send this payload to that webhook. And then you are, you know, you do whatever you want to do with this information, but you have to contact them uh, to have this webhook set up. This is this one. They they didn't send me this one. They sent me everything except the webhook. I don't think you could uh, request a webhook as part of the test. Anyway, it's fine. Um, so they have a post route where you post the merchant key. They give you that, the site key, and they give you that, right? And this is the payload that it expects. So on the headers, it will be uh, your key and basically just this information, right? Um, 
and the response from this pay, from this uh, post route is different depending on the accept header that you pass. So if you pass plain text, you get something different. Um, you get a plain text that you have to convert to a QR code, or you can pass image slash um, SVG or XML. In that case, they send you they send you a QR code. So they already convert the task into a QR code and just send that to you. Okay. The third one, which is a default, is application JSON. Now, this this one was a little bit different for me because um, so when you upload an invoice, you do get this information. But I was I was confused as to okay, so what do I do with this information? And I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Like if you get the JSON information back, what are you gonna? What are you, how how do you pay from that? You know, I, I couldn't make I couldn't make that out. I still don't know even now. Okay, so that's the upload, um, and they're basically telling you what they what they do, uh, what you need to pass here is. Um, I'll show you in the in the in the application right now. After uploading the invoice, after uploading the invoice, um, and the user gets presented with the QR code and they scan it, right? You you need to close the invoice. What the references that are generated for um, for the payments, they are not very. They cannot be unique. So you need to close each to make sure that payments don't overlap or there's no kind of confusion in that. And this is basically how you close them. You know, it's pretty much the same. They give you that, they give you that. And this reference is something that you generate for. Um, oh, actually, no, you do, you do. They do send you a reference, uh, reference here. So you can close using this reference, right? Or you can close it using a, an external reference. And an external reference is like, it's optional, but it's one that you do for yourself. And then on payments, so on payments, you're not really paying. What you're getting, what you're doing is you're getting the results of the payments. Um, so for an example, if you knew an invoice by ID that you uploaded and you stored it somewhere, if you wanted to retrieve that payment specifically, you would use that using the invoice ID. Uh, on application, we don't have this route because I'm not storing the invoices. But what I do have is external references. So the references you create for yourself can be passed as query, query parameters whenever you, from, from this route, from this get route. So to get payments. And same thing as this one. Okay, cool. So enough talk with that. Um, let's, let's have a look at the code. Okay, so this is what the code looks like, right? It's a node application. Uh, it has a source, it has controllers, it has invoice, it has payments, and it has an interceptor. So I'm using Axios to make my HTTP requests and body parser to pass the data, and the ENV schema to read the ENV file, so all my, all my keys and everything. Um, and I'm using the express framework. I have an interceptor, but this isn't really an interceptor to be honest. These are just defaults, but you could, you know, if you wanted to make it an interceptor, you could do, easily do that. So the default is the URL, which is um, from here. So zapper URL, that's that. And the merchant key is the one they give to you. Um, so what this uh, ENV thing, it picks out these variables from your ENV. So this is what I'm putting on the authorization header. If you remember from authentication, you put the API key. So that's basically what that is. And the default header for the content type is JSON. So I am sending JSON by default. We'll start with the invoices. So what I have is um, these functions are pretty much uh, very standard, actually. So I'm importing or requiring my Axios from the interceptor because I want the one that already has these defaults. So I have an upload here. So what I do is I, I upload an invoice. So I upload the invoice and I make a post. I make a post request, and from from this route, I want to get a QR code. Okay. 
And same thing as this one, I'm uploading an invoice, but I want to get back JSON. Same thing as this one, but I want to get back plain tasks, text. If you remember, you have to convert this to a QR code. So it sort of like behaves like this at the end. So this is for closing your invoice. You close it by a reference. So invoice reference or invoice ID. Um, if you if you if you do have that or you can close it by an external reference an external reference is the invoice ID that you do generate for yourself as 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 the developer All right okay so now if you do have that webhook set up basically this is what the data looks like from from that webhook so you would pick it up so if the payment status ID which is from here is five we have the payment so payment status ID if it's true then it's successful if it's five then that means it failed or it was declined so if it's five it failed if it's none as well so what you can do here is you could you could save this information in your DB if you wanted to and if the payment was successful you close the invoice and I'm closing that invoice by a reference okay so remember what I said like every every invoice that you upload has to be closed but it gets closed, I think, after an hour or so by default. So basically, basically here you, you should probably just close the invoice altogether. So this is what all this code does. There's nothing to it, to be honest. Um, and then we have our app. So our app.js file, uh, we express body parser, you know this. We're, we're requiring invoice and requiring the payment controller. I'm going to get back to the payment controller right now. So these are the defaults for the invoice that gets uploaded. So I have an external reference site. The currency, I am using RANS. Amount is zero by default and I'll override it. Again, you can go back here and just um, have a look at what these are and how they, how they behave. So this invoice also has line items, which is an array which looks like this, the name, the product code, screw the price, quantity. Now you can pause it if you want. So this is that, right? And what I'm doing here on this, on this route, on this post route is I wanna post the invoice and get the QR code back. I'm putting in today's dates and I'm putting line items and this is what they look like. So I'm appending from this invoice object and I'm appending the external reference yeah, and what I'm doing is I'm looping through each, I'm looping through each of these lines and getting the quantity and multiplying it by the unit price to get the overall amount. So this is what this is doing. And you have to multiply it by 100. So the, the currency has to be converted into cents. And what I'm doing is once, once that's done, I'm uploading that invoice object to here. So let's test this, let's run this and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do. So terminal, I'm just gonna click start. And that bad boy is running. I'm gonna draw up my insomnia. I am using insomnia. So I have, so here's a endpoint for invoice QR codes. And what I need to pass from the body is line items. I need to just copy this and put it here so okay so here's the line item that i have i have i want to buy a smart watch with this product code so each each of these smart watches is 10 rands now this isn't in cents yet so it's just 10 rand category i'm choosing to leave that blank and i want three of them Okay, so now if we do, also want to console log the reference because we want to use it. So if I send this, it takes a minute. So there you have your QR code. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. Now I am going to scan this on my phone. Okay, so, and it's 30 bucks. So pay. Uh, okay, so the payment was declined because this is a test, right? But 
we just want to do a demo of like pulling that information right now and we're gonna go here and so i have another endpoint here to do this for me so i have this payments and i'm passing to it a payment reference so i basically want the information about the payment that i just made with this external invoice and the invoice references this value and we do a post to send this cause a little bit slow cool so this is what we got back the status code is two and this is the invoice reference this is my real name and my real surname so the status for here is two okay so and if the status is true that means uh the payment was successful okay now the payment wasn't successful it was declined but i'm assuming since this is a test account it, it traces as that and if i actually were to go to my email i think i would see uh that transaction reflecting from here which was 20 30 bucks 30 bu oh this one so it's this one so this payment of this reference paying from or maybe it's because i'm paying myself so this was this is the external reference which is this one here and we were paying 30 bucks and it was declined okay so that's how you do this and on this section you would you would close um by that reference and say cool the payment had the payment has actually been done and then you close that uh, that invoice by reference okay so on this payment controller it's pretty much doing like it, it's it's getting the payment using the external reference that's all these functions are doing so this function is being used uh, here by this call so that is pretty much how you integrate the API um, the Zappa API just go to my github and have a look at it so for an example this is this is the notify uh, route. So that would be in this case, your, let's see your webhook. When you contact support, you could say, uh, they will want a post endpoint. My website name dot something slash API slash payments slash notify. Okay, so this part is done. Now, the next part we're going to do is we are going to move to the web section of this thing, which is this one. 